the AFCFTA, the African Continental Free Trade Area, is a free trade area that comprises 46 uh, countries who have deposited their instruments of ratification. The most recent uh, countries are um, the Comore Islands and Mozambique. And I'm very happy that uh, between uh, these two countries, or with the addition of these two countries, we have 46 countries that have ratified the agreement establishing the AFCFTA. Only one country has not signed the agreement establishing the AFCFTA, and we are uh, working uh, with that country. Um, with the countries who have not yet ratified, it's not because they have a political opposition to the AFCFTA or because they have uh, a different view. They just have to go through the domestic process of uh, consultations to enable the private sector, civil society, to better understand the AFCFTA so that the governments can, um, can ratify. We are building a, a, a market of uh, 1.3 billion people with a combined GDP of 3.4 trillion United States dollars. By the year 2035, the, the AFCFTA market, the combined GDP of the AFCFTA, AFCFTA market is estimated to be close to 7 trillion United States dollars. That means that there are opportunities for small and medium enterprises, uh, for young entrepreneurs uh, to export across regions of the African uh, continent and to take advantage of this vast market. However, if we don't have an integrated single market, we will not be able to achieve uh, the positive projections that many around the world have made about the potential of the AFCFTA. For example, the World Bank has projected that by the year 2035, uh, the AFCFTA has the potential to lift 100 million Africans out of poverty to contribute over $450 billion to Africa's GDP and to boost intra-Africa trade by over 80%. This positive projection and the potential uh, for small and medium enterprises and young entrepreneurs will not become a reality if we do not accelerate implementation of the AFCFTA. But as I said earlier, I'm very pleased that we now have 46 countries who are in implementation mode of the AFCFTA. I would like to now address uh, the issue of um, who exactly does the AFCFTA benefit and how. The AFCFTA is not for governments. It's negotiated by governments, but it is for the private sector. And in particular, it is for small and medium enterprises and uh, young entrepreneurs. As you know, 450 million jobs are created in the small and medium enterprises sector in Africa. This small and medium enterprise sector in Africa is, is one of the, the largest drivers and motive forces of Africa's economic activity. And so it is absolutely critical that as we implement the AFCFTA, we do so in a way in which small and medium enterprises and young entrepreneurs uh, will benefit. We have introduced what we call the Guided Trade Initiative, which is an initiative intended to assist countries who have ratified the AFCFTA and to assist um, small and medium enterprises to know how to trade under AFCFTA preferences and under the rules of the AFCFTA. So for example, last year uh, there were smallholder farmers of um, tea from Kenya, who exported tea uh, to Ghana. We worked with the government of uh, Kenya, as well as the government of Ghana, and um, the exporters themselves, the farmers themselves, to build capacity for them to understand how they can trade across 
regions of the continent, and more importantly, how they can effectively, effectively make use of the benefits that the AFCFTA offers them. So this is what the Guided Trade Initiative is, is about. Last year, seven countries participated in the Guided Trade Initiative, with um, uh, small and medium enterprises being uh, part of that initiative, uh, as I've just mentioned in the example of um, the, the, the exports of the tea from Kenya to Ghana, to demonstrate the benefit of the AFCFTA. Exporters uh, from Ghana exported to uh, Cameroon uh, ceramic tiles. The importer received a 20% duty reduction. That means that that importer, that company, is now able to be 20% more competitive uh, in the market for ceramic tiles. They, it means that they can compete against tiles that are manufactured in other parts of the world. So this is a demonstration of the benefits, the preferen preferential treatment that we provide to one another in the AFCFTA market, and we used the Guided Trade Initiative to showcase uh, these examples of the benefits of the AFCFTA. There are, of course, challenges also, and that's why we uh, started this initiative. It's not easy to understand how to export from your country, your region, to another part, uh, another region of the African continent. And so we are uh, uh, meeting this challenge by working very closely with the governments, with the exporters, to really ensure that they understand the rules of the AFCFTA, the customs procedures, the transit con uh, procedures. All of these uh, practical elements are very, very important for an exporter to understand so that they can see the benefits of the AFCFTA. As we all know, one of the biggest challenges the African continent has is the cost of currency convertibility, uh, which contributes to a higher cost of trade. If you are in Ghana and you want to trade with somebody uh, in Kenya, you have to first convert the Ghanaian CD into a third currency, usually the dollar. Your counterparty in Kenya receives the dollar and then they have to convert the dollar into the Kenyan shilling. This cost of converting currency, we estimate it to be at about $5 billion annually. Africa has 42 currencies. It means that um, our capacity and ability to boost intra-Africa trade is significantly constrained by the cost of trade. That is why we have um, partnered with Africsim Bank to introduce the Pan-African Payments and Settlement System, which is a digital system to enable trade. So you will now, through the Pan-African Payments and Settlement System, you will be able to trade in local currency. In the example that I've just made of a trader in Ghana, another one in Kenya, the trader in Ghana uh, using the platform, the Pan-African Payments and Settlement System, the trader will be able to trade in local currency, in Ghanaian CD. Their counterparty will receive uh, the payment in local currency, in Kenyan shillings. This will reduce the cost of trade. It will also ensure the affordability of trade. And more importantly, it will benefit small and medium enterprises and young entrepreneurs uh, who are not able to afford uh, the exorbitant amounts that are required um, to change currencies, um, convert currency from local currency into the dollar to enable uh, trade uh, to happen. And so the Pan-African Payments and Settlement System is one of our biggest deliveries uh, uh, within the framework of the AFCFTA 
And I'm very proud that uh, we're working very closely with Africsim Bank to make sure that more and more countries, more and more commercial banks are part of the Pan-African payments and settlement system uh, so that we can make trade affordable, accessible, and so that we can boost the productive capacity and competitiveness of the small medium enterprises in Africa.